In this next lecture, we're going to look just a little bit about simple statistical tests in R. And I need to start this with a caveat. This is not a statistics class, and we're really not going to talk about how you pick which tests to run or how you pick if you're doing generalized linear models, uh, specifically how you pick which family or which link you might want to use for those. The focus that I'm going to do here is really on how you can work these tests and the output you get from them into larger sets of tidyverse code, where you can have this as part of a larger analysis where you're bringing in and cleaning up data and then where you ultimately want to create tables with your results and, and uh, visualizations and things like that. Um, many of the people who take this class end up also taking STAT 511 and perhaps STAT 512. We now have the STAR series of courses at CSU as well, which are really great. So those are the correct places to go and learn which statistical tests to use. We're not going to cover them here, but here we'll cover the mechanics of how you take what you get from those and, and use that in these larger pipelines. So R is a wonderful place to be if you want to, to um, fit different, run different statistical tests or fit different models, because R has lots and lots of different functions for these pieces. It really is something that was built in large part by statisticians, and it has a lot of coverage for things you would want to do statistically. So far, I don't think I've been able to find a statistical test that I wanted to perform that I couldn't find a function in R, either in base R or in a package that serves as an extension to base R. We're going to start here with using an example from a very simple test, and that's called the Shapiro-Wilk test of normality. Um, most statistical tests will have a null hypothesis that you're testing against. In this case, the null hypothesis is that the data that you're looking at follow a normal distribution. So we'll have a string of data, of numeric data, and with string, you should already be thinking that we're going to probably have this as a vector. So we'll have this string of numbers, and we'll really be looking here to try to figure out if there's any strong evidence against the idea that that data has a normal distribution. The check that we'll use for that is if the p-value we get from running this test is lower than a specified threshold, and when it's often used is 0.05, then we'll reject the null hypothesis. A lot of times, uh, different parametric tests that you run might require the assumption that your data does follow a normal distribution. So this kind of test can be helpful in that it can help you check that on your path to running some of the other tests that require that assumption. If you find that the distribution of the data does not look like it's normal, then you can at that point shift and consider other tests that might be more appropriate that don't require that assumption. And in some cases, that might be a non-parametric test rather than something parametric. So we're using this test again just as an example of the common ways that many of these statistical tests input data and then common ways that they, that they um, that they give you the output that you then want to work with more to visualize or to create summaries or, or, or to otherwise explore. So it has two characteristics that, again, are common for a lot of the functions running statistical tests in R. The first relates to its input. It does not input a data frame. Instead, it inputs a vector. For some tests, they'll input multiple vectors. Uh, for this particular one, we're going to be looking at examples where it inputs a single vector. So it's got a different input than a lot of the tidyverse functions that we work with where the input format is a data frame. The other thing that is different is the type of output that it gives you. So it does not output a data frame. Again, that's different from a lot of these tidyverse functions that have the same input format and output format, both of them a data frame. So instead, it outputs a list object. So we're going to talk about both of these characteristics as we go through this example. And in particular, we're going to talk and try to build up to how we could still include something like this in a tidy workflow. So to show how this works, we're going to simulate some data. We'll use a function that allows us to simulate data from a normal distribution. This function is rnorm. And when we run this function, we'll need to include the number of values that we want in the final vector the mean that we want 
for those values and the standard deviation of the normal distribution we're drawing this from. So we will pick to do a thousand values with a mean of 200 and a standard deviation of 50. And right now I'm gonna save these into a vector and we'll call this a normal example vector. So let's come in and I'm gonna load the tiny verse just because we'll need that later. And then we'll do this normal VX vector. And we're gonna use our norm to draw samples from a random normal distribution. We want a thousand values in this case, and we were pulling from a mean of 200 and a standard deviation of 50. All right, so let's run that, and we can come down and take a look at that. You can see that it's really long. We've got a thousand values here. And all of these values are numbers that aren't too terribly far from 200, where we had 200 and then the, the um, standard deviation of 50. Now we might wanna take a look at this. A lot of times histograms are really helpful for looking to, to see what distribution a data set might fall in. Now in this case, we have it in a vector rather than a data frame. So we're not gonna use ggplot. Instead, we'll use another function in the ggplot package called qplot, and this will let us input this as a vector. So we can do the vector, and then I believe we need to put in for this that the geome is a histogram. And that will give us a histogram. This is something that's convenient to know, this qplot, but honestly, I don't use it very often because we can always take this data and create a, a tibble where it's the first column. And so that's often what I'll do. I, I would often prefer to work with the data frame that is a single column rather than working with a vector if I'm trying to do things in a more tidyverse framework. So here's our histogram of the data. You can see um, reassuringly that it does have a mean around 200 and it does have this normal shape where it's very symmetrical on both sides. So it's very unlikely that we're going to find that there's any evidence that this data is not normally distributed, which is exactly what we would hope since we did indeed pull it from a random normal distribution. So again, it looks pretty normal, but we can run the test and we'll use the function shapiro.test to run that. The only thing that that takes is the vector of numbers. There's some other options as well, but in this case, we won't be using those. All right, so we'll put in the name of our vector. You can see down here the output that it's given us. This output is really meant for us to be able to read directly, and it's formatted in a nice way where we can pretty clearly see elements. So we can get the reminder of what we were running. It was a Shapiro-Wilk normality test. It reminds us the data that we put in, and then it gives us a test statistic and also a p-value. This again is what we're checking. And if we were using an alpha of 0.05, then we check to see if that was smaller than 0.05. Um, it definitely is not in this case. Again, uh, the, this data uh, has very little evidence that it's differing from a normal distribution, which is good. Um, so this printout is easy for us to read here, but a lot of times we're gonna be doing longer, more complex things where we really, instead of just reading it here and interpreting it, we wanna be able to use this information later. So one thing that we can do is we can save this output to an object and then we can take a look at it. So we'll save this to an object named X SW result. So we can run that and we can come down and print that out and take a look at it. So the print method for this is showing us exactly what happens if we just run the test. But we can check and see first what class it is. It's this special class called HTest that's really specific to, to this specific uh, um, kind of family of test. But if we check is.list, we can see that really it's a list underneath. You can see that that's true. So we can do things to explore that, right? We can do STR to look at the structure. 
And now we can see that it's got elements in it that we could really work with if we wanted to. So it's got um, one value that's called the statistic. It's got one that's the p-value. It's got one that's giving that method. And then it's another that's giving the data that we originally used. All right, so these are what we were just looking at in, in terms of us being able to figure out that it really was a list underneath and then using the str function to look a little bit more closely at what's kind of tucked in there. It's still because it's in a list in a shape that's a little tricky to extract where we might struggle to pull things out. So we were looking earlier about how we could extract elements from this and we could use those here. We could use x sw result and say we wanted to get the p-value. We can do dollar sign and then p-value and we can pull out just that value if we want it. But a lot of times we might not want to mess with this kind of way of extracting it. Now there's a package that's called Broom that's got really nice functions that allow you to more easily extract uh, some of the different elements that you might want to work with from this object that we get back from running that statistical test, the function for the statistical test. And this is actually a special, um, it's a special type of function that's called a method. So this function will look first to see what type of object you have, so what specific type, and then it has different things that it will run based on that. So it will look not just at the output that we get from the Shapiro-Wilk normality test, but it'll also let us tidy up the outputs that we get from other types of statistical tests and even from uh, statistical models. And in each case, it's really going through and it's checking to see exactly what information we have in the object we're putting in based on the class that it has, the very specific class that it has. And then it will run its code based on that. The output it gives us is this tidy version of the information contained in that test. So let's come through. And this is in the package broom. So make sure that you load that. We have our data in this X SW result. And so we can use the tidy function from broom on that. And you can see that that gives us a tibble. Now it's a really small tibble, it's only got one row, but it's got some of the information that we might wanna keep and we might wanna aggregate if we were doing lots of these tests where we've got the statistic right here, and then we've got the p-value, and then we've got the method that was being used. Now, as a note, we could run through, and we could pipe directly from the test in. So tidy, the first thing that it takes is the output from this type of test. And so if we wanted to, we could pipe directly into tidy, and if we wanted to go even one more step, we could pipe in the vector. So this is another way of expressing what we just did. This might not seem like it's a big deal right now. We've done something really pretty simple and straightforward where it didn't seem like it was all that hard to just look at the print output from the test and work with that directly. However, it turns out that the ability to do this is very exciting. Uh, we're going to look at some cases as we build up over the video lectures in this chapter, and we'll look at some cases where this lets us apply the same test to lots of different elements in, in a data frame that we're working with and get back the results from lots of tests in a way that lets us really explore and compare them when we get, back, get them back rather than having to go through them and analyze uh, one value and get something back and then analyze the next and get something back and so on.